Hi, I'm Daniel and I have an exciting new video for you today. And as you know, I've built many crazy arcade cabinets in the last few years. Uh, the one from the world's most expensive arcade video uh, on YouTube, the Tron cabinet. That was that crazy 43 inch one with the steering wheel and the moving pedal tray. The black carbon one, the Sekiro one with the uh, drawer with the special guns in them. Uh, and many, many other ones. But now I finally finished a project I've been waiting to do for a very, very long time. My take on the original Neo Geo MVS cabinet from the 1990s. And for those who are not familiar with this cabinet, the Neo Geo MVS, uh, which is multi-video system, became legendary in the 90s. And not only for its modular design and the option to switch cartridges, but most of all for the iconic games it housed. Uh, classics like uh, Metal Slug, King of Fighters, uh, Shock Troopers, uh, Neo Drift Out. And the list goes on and on. For a long time I wanted to build my own perfect version of this arcade machine, staying close to the original, uh, both in hardware and appearance, but with my own special sauce on it, uh, bringing the Neo Geo MVS to the 21st century. So I made a rule list or a list with things I really wanted. And first of all, it must have the Neo Geo MVS shape, the traditional shape, the iconic shape uh, with the correct dimensions, but with different artwork. Two. It must have a real CRT monitor for the authentic feel. Three, only original controls. Uh, I mean the buttons, no extra buttons, no cheating. Uh, four, uh, I really wanted the Pixelcade marquee monitor, the dynamic marquee monitor with the LEDs, uh, just be because they are freaking amazing. Five, I wanted to use hardware emulation instead of like the normal software emulation on a, on a PC using the Mr. FPGA project for the real feel. And lastly, no RGB or LED buttons or anything uh, fancy. I wanted to stay as close to the original as possible. So I started modeling the original MVS cabinet in Fusion and starting to change features like the marquee height. Uh, I wanted it to be less, uh, less in height. I added cutouts for the speakers. I made changes to the control panel and the control panel box. And I completely uh, redid the back design, adding a fun double hinged uh, door for the monitor compartment. And I added a lot of other stuff. And to get the original feel, I didn't want any modern LCD screen whatsoever. I wanted the best CRT monitor I could find or afford. I bought a very difficult to find and very expensive Sony PVM monitor, the 2130QM cube uh, to be exact. And PVM stands for Professional Video Monitor. And the difference with the regular, uh, like a normal old CRT monitor, is that PVMs are designed for professional use, uh, offering um, superior color accuracy, things like that, image quality and reliability. Oh, and it got uh, RGB inputs. And this model only needed some cleaning and calibration and it was in excellent condition. Playing original retro games on a PVM monitor is like playing PlayStation 5 games on an 8K monitor. The colors are so vibrant, the images are so sharp and the games look absolutely amazing. The build was pretty straightforward, although there were a lot of miter cuts that, need, that needed to be spot on. I opted to go for 18 millimeter plywood with a special coating on both sides. And this is also uh, sometimes referred to as um, concrete plywood. And this material is lighter than MDF. It is moisture resistant and it is um, much stronger than MDF. But the downside is it's also much more expensive. Cutting out the panels, dry fitting them, gluing, screwing, adding casters, hinges, inlets. 
uh, and I work as neatly as possible, even for the parts you don't see. So, as for the artwork, I, did, I didn't want to go for the standard red Neo Geo look. And I asked Sai Yoshi to make me a Metal Slug Neo Geo cabinet design. As Metal Slug is one of my favorite games, this would be great in my living room. The artwork is printed on mono, monomere vinyl, which I normally use with a matte finish. And then it was time to build the control panel and I didn't want to use the standard plexiglass protective layer as I would normally do because this would not uh, fit the original feel. Uh, but vinyl would not stay pretty for long and would also not feel original. So I found this Lexan material which is also called polycarbonate. Uh, it's basically a kind of plastic Then they, they can reverse print on from the back. And this stuff is amazing and it's used in industrial appliances like control panels for machinery, home trainers and lots of other stuff. It feels wonderful and it will last a lifetime. Here I am installing the buttons and just the original red, yellow, green and blue buttons. Then some player one and two start buttons and a select button. You can see me installing the coin door. Of course, a good quality one, not the cheap plastic fake ones. And I switched the mechanics to be able to accept 50 euro cent uh, coins. Al Linky from Pixelgate made me a custom Pixelgate LED marquee and I used these for the very first time in my wall cabinet video and I really liked them. And these marquees are dynamic so for each game you have this beautiful artwork and even with animations uh, you will love it. And of course the brain of the machine, the Mr. Kate FPGA computer. And for those who don't know, uh, the Mr. FPGA platform is known for its hardware emulation, uh, which basically uh, recreates vintage systems faithfully. And unlike software emulators, which use code to mimic hardware, Mr. FPGA uh, replicates the original circuits uh, and uh, components using field, program field, progr field programmable gate array FPGA technology. Basically, if I tell the FPGA to be a Neo Geo chip, it reprograms itself to be this chip. Wonderful technology. So you can buy these Mr. FPGA computers assembled uh, and ready to go online, but I will also put a link down in the description, or you can uh, build one yourself if you like to spend a little less money. And this version is the Mr. Kate uh, FPGA and you could directly connect this system to original arcade PCBs and arcade boards and it also has some really cool other features but a standard uh, Mr. FPGA setup will work just as well. It's connected um, with RGB over SCART to the Sony PVM and the buttons are connected to it through to Brook fighting boards over USB. And yes I know USB has latency but I can enable a fast polling USB setting, which, may, which makes latency unnoticeable. And now it's finally ready. So uh, without further ado, I'm thrilled to show you. Let's turn it on.
So let's get some coins in and play some metal slug. And this is Metal Slug 5. And this game is such an amazing game. Let's choose a character. Marco! I think the first um, version of Metal Slug is um, released in 1996 by the uh, SNK company. And they really set the standards for, uh, for pixel art and animation. And basically it's just a run and gun shooter in which you need to save these prisoner of war dudes. And uh, in return they will give you uh, grenades and rocket launchers, uh, heavy machine guns and other cool weapons. And it's an amazing game. It's ultra violent as you can see. And therefore in the, the USA version and I think also the European, oh, I'm dead. In the European version, the blood is disabled by default. But you can really easy, easily enable it again. In the soft dip settings, by just holding the B, C and D buttons when the game starts up. Making a video and playing this game at the same time is really difficult. And if you are into Metal Slug, uh, I would recommend that you check out these bitmap book books and they have a uh, book specially made for Metal Slug which is called I think the history of Metal Slug or something like that and in this book there's so much beautiful artwork and interviews and behind the scenes stories and if you like pixel art and retro games this is definitely a book you should check out. And that again it on this uh, CRT TV or a CRT monitor it's just a joy it's a pure joy and also using the real Neo Geo buttons and this is the way it was played back in the day well actually it was played much better back in the day but this is what it would look like back in the days in the arcades. So now I've eaten too much food and now I'm fat. Look at the, look at my character. Anyway, an amazing game. So let me show you another game. Load drum. And let's go to Neo Drift Out. Turf Masters is also a great game, new drift out, new technology. And this is an, uh, another beautiful game. This is an isometric racing game. Name entry, Dan. And here we go. Let's choose a car. And this is a really nice game. It's You keep playing this. It is kind of racist though, as, as if you if you are uh, racing in Africa, everybody has sp spears <laughs> and everybody wears uh, ropes there, which is kind of old fashioned, but we don't care. These are old games. Let me turn the sound down for you a little bit. And I need to reach the checkpoint in time. Let's see if we 
can make it. Ah! Uh, no, 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 no! Three, two, one. No! Oh, I can still drive. No, finish. Anyway. As you can see, we have so many games here. And as you can see, all of these games have beautiful marquees. And if they don't have an original marquee, you will see the Neo Geo uh, logo here. But it looks really, really beautiful. Okay, this is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Two huge builds are coming up, the 43 inch Monster Arcade machine and the even bigger huge 50 inch cabinet with the electronic height adjustment. So please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Making these videos is a lot of work and I really appreciate it if you would help to uh, grow, uh, help this channel to grow and reach as much arcade enthusiasts as possible. Uh, also, follow me on Instagram at the Daniel Spice or the Daniel Spice underscore arcades as I post regular updates and building vlogs there. So, thank you again for watching and uh, happy gaming! Bye!